Hello there, and welcome to another C Sharp Intermediate tutorial with the Stride Game Engine. In this tutorial, we'll have a look at audio. By the end of this tutorial, we've learned about the different types of audio. We've learned how to load audio and to play it like this. We learn about spatialized audio by positioning this weapon and firing the weapon. And then finally, we'll learn about streaming music or larger sound files. Let's get started with the audio start scene. We have this uh, gun selected here, and we're going to be moving that gun around in just a second. There is an omnidirection movement script already attached so that we can move it around with the WASD keys. But before we get to any kind of coding, let's first have a look at the different audio files. So I'm inside the audio folder and you can see I have these three audio files already selected. Normally, if you add files to your project, you click on add asset, go to media, and here you find the three types of audio. You have sound effects, which are uh, non-spatialized sounds. Think of a sound like completing a quest when you trigger something in a collision trigger. Then you have spatialized sound, which you can use for directional sound. So when a certain dialogue is coming from a certain direction from a player, or when you have a box falling on the ground behind you, then you want to hear this sound to the left or to the right of you. And then finally, we have music. And since music can be quite a large file, you want to be streaming in this kind of file. We can use an async script for that. I already have these three files here, so let's have a look what kind of properties these sound assets have. Let's start with this ukulele file. At first, we have the source property, which refers to the source asset that we have in our project. You can see it's referring to a .wav file. Uh, Stride supports other types like MP3, OGG. And for this ukulele file, we have the .wav extension. We then have a property called compression rate. Uh, if we set this to really low, then there is no compression and we have a uh, we have the best audio quality. And if we set this, this to really high, we have a lower file volume for our game, but the sound may sound really bad because the sound quality gets lower. And then finally, I'm going to look at these bottom two options here, spatialized. We check that if we want to have our sound turned into a 3D sound. And then finally, stream from disk. We want to use that for larger audio files, so for music or larger texts that are being spoken. Well, let's go back to our gun and let's start making a script that we are going to attach to this gun. So let's go to uh, our code folder. Let's open up the audio folder here and let's create a new script and let's call this audio player. So we select our gun click add component, and we're going to go for audio player. And let's get coding. So in our script, we are first going to make a public variable of the type sound. And we'll call this ukulele sound. We have to import the namespace for this, which is called stride.audio. And we have to remove that end there. Now, before we can play a sound, we first need to create an instance of it. So let's create a variable called sound instance. And let's call this ukulele instance. Then in our start method, all we have to do is say ukulele instance is ukulele sound create instance. Now, if we want to play this sound, again, really easy. We say if input is key pressed, and let's go for keys.u, where the u stands for ukulele. And all we do now is say ukulele instance dot play. And notice we also have a play exclusive method here. 
That means that if there are other sounds playing, then this play exclusive is the only sound that will be playing. But we'll just use this play method. So now let's go back to the stride editor. We go to gun and all we do now is reference in that audio file inside the asset folder. We link that in and now we can start playing with our game. And if we click on audio and if we press U, we play our ukulele sound. Let's move over to the 3D or spatialized sound. When we're working with 3D sound or spatialized sound, we have to work with audio emitters. And our gun is going to emit a sound. So for that, we can use a component called audio emitter. So let's add that through the add component button. And then we have this dictionary here of the sounds or the list of sounds that this gun is going to emit. So here we have to click on the plus icon and we have to provide a sound effect. I'm just going to call this gun and then I'm going to link in the gun shot effect. The options below here, HRTF, directional factor and environment. Those are properties that are more used in use cases where you have a VR headset. So if you have an environment with a small room around you, let's say that you would be in some sort of a building, you would set the environment, uh, use HRTF for uh, sound that is above and below you, but that really works or only works in a VR kind of setting. So we'll be skipping that for this tutorial. But now that we have this audio emitter, we also need to have a, a source on our camera that is listening to these kind of sounds that are being emitted. So we have to go to our camera, click on add component, and here we have to add an audio listener. It doesn't have any properties further. It just tells the stride engine that this is a listening point and that the 3D audio that is playing by these emitters, by our gun, that it needs to be picked up by this audio listener. Let's go back to our script and let's make another variable. And this time we're going to be using, we first need to retrieve that audio emitter component. So we say audio emitter component, which is the audio emitter Let's call this component. And inside this audio emitter component, we need to retrieve that gun emitter. And we're going to store that in a private variable as well. And we need to make use of the audio emitter sound controller. So we're going to say audio, or let's call this gun emitter. Now inside our start method, now let's retrieve that audio emitter component by saying audio emitter component is entity dot get audio emitter component. And then we can get the gun emitter by saying audio emitter component. And then we can use a quick indexing here by using that key that we used inside the editor. And we call that key gun. And by doing this, we can get that gun emitter out there. We automatically get this audio emitter sound controller with the gun sound attached to it. So let's copy these lines below. Let's say if instead of key pressed, you know what, let's just leave this with key pressed. And if I press G, then all I have to say here is gun sound or gun emitter play that sound. Now we've already set everything up inside the editor. So let's build this and play the game. So let's load the audio scene. And if we press G, we fire the gun. Notice how it's coming straight from the middle of our speakers or our headset. But if we move to the right, Our sound will not only come to the right because our weapon has been moved to the right. If we move it even further away, we will start to hear it even less. And if I press the A key again, it will start moving into our screen. 
and that way we can move it to the left and we hear the panning to our left. So the spatialized sounds, it's automatically calculating the direction of where that sound is coming from using those sound emitters and the sound listener on our camera. Now, if you have a sound like the ukulele, you can still set the direction where the sound is coming from, let's say the left speaker or the right speaker, using the pan property if you want to. But uh, I would just recommend using a spatialized sound for that. Now let's move on to loading a larger sound file, like a piece of music that we want to play. So I'm going to go back into the Stride engine and let's create a new entity and let's call this music. And we're also going to make a new script here. Let's go to audio and let's just type in script. And this time we're going to make use of an async script because we want to be Lo we're going to load a file and until that file is ready uh, we are not we won't be able to play that file until it has been fully loaded so an async script let's call that music player and let's attach that to our music entity music player and let's hop on over to the code uh, just like with the previous script, we first need to make a variable. Let's call this public sound and let's call this background music. We have to include the namespace stride.audio. Again, we have to make a private variable called sound instance. Let's call this music. And then in the start of our execute method here, so uh, the part where it's being run only once, we want to say music instance is background music dot create instance. And this will load, this will create an instance of background music, but it will load this file in the background. And if we go back to our stride engine real quick and if we go to that audio folder and we go to the music file that we're going to load if i select that notice how i have this stream from disk property selected and the gunshot effect had the spatialized selected and the ukulele had none of these two options selected and now that we have this instance of our music all we have to do is wait until that music file has been fully loaded so we have to make use of the await functionality and then we say music and then we use the ready to play method. Now, inside the while loop, we're going to be checking the spacebar key. And if we are playing our sound, then we're going to pause our sound. And if it's already paused, then we simply want to continue playing. So we're going to say input is key pressed. Let's use keys dot space. And next to and inside this if statement, we are going to say if that music instance, if music dot play state equals the play state dot playing, then our music should pause. And otherwise, we'll say music.play. Again, we have to make use of this await script next frame because otherwise we would be waiting because if we would not be pressing any kind of keys, then otherwise the statement while game is running would just continue to loop or wait for input. And since there is nothing happening else inside this while loop, our game would be uh, frozen, it would be stuck. Let's go back to the editor. Let's select music and all we have to do now is load in that file into our property and let's give our game a spin. We select audio. And if we press space, we can play and pause. 
and it will simply continue where it has left off if we unpause our music. And that's it for audio in the Stride game engine. Hope you've learned something and I'll see you around for the next tutorial.